So now that we've developed our idea for what a negative exponent means, we're now going to start looking at some problems. Now, one of the things that negative exponents tend to bring into a problem is there's actually lots of ways to start the problem off. We could begin the problem by moving the stuff with the negative exponents, like we did in the problem before. We could do that. The only uh, drawback to moving stuff at the beginning of a problem is you may end up having to deal with negative exponents again. So you may end up having to move them again. So instead, I prefer to just work with my properties of exponents. Here we're multiplying. And so remember, when we multiply, we add the exponents. We drop down from multiplication down to addition. And so we'd be doing 4 plus negative 6. And we can simplify that arithmetic which would give us an x to the negative second. And now we can go ahead and at the end of the problem take care of the negative exponent issue. And we'd get 1 over x squared. If you had used your properties of exponents and moved the negative exponent first, well then you'd have been dividing and you do 4 minus 6, you'd have got x to the negative second and you'd have had to move the exponent again anyway. So moving the negative exponent at the start here really just was more work in the end of the problem. And so for that reason, I'd like to simplify everything first and deal with the negative exponents at the end. Now, it's not the only way to deal with the problem, but that's how I would like to do it. That way I don't have to develop any extra rules except for the move the negative exponent at the end idea. Otherwise, we just do them the same as we do uh, any other exponent problem except we're dealing with arithmetic with some sign numbers, perhaps. Let's consider another example here. This time we have a bit more to this problem uh, than just multiplying single x's. We have a 25x to the negative third, y to the fifth, times 6x to the fourth, y to the negative twelfth. Remember, the way we approach this problem is by pairing up common pieces. So my 25, my 6, my numbers, we're going to multiply them. Same thing with the x's, same thing with the y's. And so we start to do that. 25 times 6 is 150. Then we come to the x to the negative third, x to the negative fourth. We use our properties of exponents, we're multiplying, so we would add negative 3 plus positive 4 would be a positive 1. So we would have x to the first, or just x if you want it. <clears throat> then we move to the next piece. And we put our y's together. y to the fifth, y to the negative twelfth. 5 plus negative 12 will be negative 7. And we get y to the negative 7. So we've done our multiplication step. And now, at the end of the problem, there's nothing else I can do as far as multiplying those. Uh, they're all different things. So now, at the end of the problem is when we deal with the negative exponents. Only the stuff with the negative exponents moves. So the 150 and the uh, x to the first, that stays put in the numerator. The y to the negative seventh moves to the bottom, becomes y to the positive seventh, and now we have our answer. 150x over y to the seventh. So let's consider another one. This time, we have a quantity being raised to a power. Just so happens the power we're raising to is a negative power. It doesn't change anything. We do this the same as before. Uh, the one little exception here is with the number, we do have to be a little bit patient. So each thing is going to get raised to the negative second power. So 3 to the negative second. Now we're used to doing 3 to the second saying that's 9. Uh, because it's a negative power, we can't simplify it yet. A really common mistake I'll see people make is they'll write negative 9. Please, that's not negative 9. Uh, that's going to be 3 to the negative second. Eventually, that 3 is going to move down to the bottom. And then we'll be able to square it. But for now, we just leave it alone. Then that brings us to x to the 7th raised to the negative 4th. Or negative 2nd. Remember, when we uh, take a power and raise it to another power, we multiply the exponents. So we're going to get 7 times negative 2 will be negative 14. And then we have y to the negative third raised to the negative second. Again, we multiply. 
negative 3 times negative 2 will make that y to the positive 6th power. Now we've done all the simplifying we can do that way. There's nothing I can do to put the 3, the x, or the y together because they're all different. So at this point we now move to get rid of our negative exponents. So the y to the 6th stays put. The 3 having a negative exponent moves to the bottom. The x having a negative exponent also moves to the bottom. And now we can finally simplify that 3. 3 to the 2nd, 3 times 3 is 9. And we get y to the 6th over 9x to the 14th power. So in our next video we're going to take the exponent stuff that we've been doing and put it together with multiplication and division. And these will definitely be, upcoming ones will be the hardest of these problems.